Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm delighted to have the opportunity to talk to you about Sangamo, and um, as everyone else has, I should uh, direct you to our SEC filings because I'm going to make some forward-looking statements. I, as I was preparing this talk, I found my talk from last year here and realised how far, how far and how fast Sangamo had come. Um, we're a 22-year-old company, but we're also a start-up of only about 15 or 16 months. And we renamed ourselves at the start of the year as Sangamo Therapeutics because we wanted to emphasise that our, our goal, our quest in life, is to treat patients. We love doing groundbreaking science, and we've, we've defined many of the parameters in genome editing, but we believe that these should, should only happen if they're applied as genomic therapies that transform patients' lives. Now, we're known as the Zinc Finger Company, and I'll talk to you a little about Zinc Fingers at the end of this presentation, but when you do Zinc Fingers, or, or the exquisite molecular biology that is the basis of it, you get good at other things. And so gene therapy is something that's very natural for us, and many times when we're doing a Zinc Finger construct, you create a cDNA, or gene therapy, and, and we took advantage of that when we created the cDNA for factor eight that was licensed to Pfizer in the early summer of this year. And that truly has been transformative for the company because many people then came and woke up to us and looked at what we could do. And then looking towards the right, cell therapy is something we've also been doing for some time. Um, you're all aware of the HIV experiments that we did uh, in the five, ten years ago. And as the results of those are coming out, what we're discovering is that we have about 102 patients that have been treated with uh, where their CCR5 receptor has been mutated. And it has been a successful experiment. The patients are alive and well. The T cells remain edited. And there are some fascinating changes to the, T, the HIV reservoir and the T cell repertoire that we will be describing in some later publications. But that experience with T cells has taken us very easily into CAR T space. And with Gary and his team at Sangamo, they now have data that shows 90 plus percent modification of T cells, where we can modify both HLA and the T cell receptor locus and drop a new uh, targeting moiety into the track locus with remarkable efficiency of, of 80 and 90 percent that truly is best in class. And it's more than just the editing, it's the understanding of T-cell biology and how to look after them that has allowed us to uh, put out some, some really impressive data on this. And finally, Zinc Finger started not as an editing capability, but as a transcription control. I'll do this to music. Um, <laughs> But as a transcription control, and we, f we find that providing we can find a site within a kilobase of the five prime of the promoter region of a gene, we can control transcription. And we showed some data earlier this year where we were able to turn uh, down tau um, very precisely and re reduce the expression of tau down to uh, low, low teen percentage. And that's a work that will advance as delivery advances and we're very excited about. But if I look at what the focus of the company is, because when, you're, when you have a platform that can do so much, you have to um, focus the company and tell the world what they should look for. And the first is the clinical trials, and we now have four clinical trials open. We've treated the first patient for haemophilia A gene therapy. And for the other three, um, genome editing, where we drop a new gene into the intron of the liver, we have patients in screening, and we really do hope that very soon we'll be able to tell you all about the first in vivo genome editing ever. Second thing is platform development. I'm going to show you some work towards the end that shows just how much the Zinc Finger platform has advanced. But as several of my colleagues and competitors have told you, it's all about delivery. And we feel we need to be involved in that. We have some uh, really interesting LMP data, but we're also working on AVs because we feel that the, the group that is aware of the right delivery technology is a group that will eventually move genome editing into the future and we will do the work both in-house and partner within, with the appropriate partner. Which takes me to the fourth bucket, which is partnering. 
We were often a little curmudgeonly in the past, and we have realised and recognised that we can't do it ourselves. The Pfizer partnership and the work we do with BioVerative is a clear statement of the importance of partnerships to Sangamo. You will hear more of these because the, the potential of this platform is so great that we have to do it where others bring the biology and we bring the technology. Which then gives us this wonderful graphic which says who we are and what we will do. At the heart of everything is the Sangamo research in engine. And it was very touching at, at the break earlier to meet some of the people from Sangamo from 10 and 20 years ago who are now at other companies and are equally excited to see the company moving forward. We will feed this engine within licensing enabling technologies and novel delivery. And we will forward integrate in the liver with uh, uh, MPS1 and MPS2. And then with gene therapy for Fabry. And we do that because we can deliver to the liver. Eventually, though, we believe that we will move beyond the liver and beyond gene therapy and genome engineering. And our target, as I said earlier, truly is gene editing and to solve disease because that's the power of this platform. It isn't just about providing a source of an enzyme or a factor from the liver. It's about really going into the body and going to wherever the gene is expressed and correcting that. We can't do this alone, as I said, so for other, other projects and other therapy areas, we'll partner with others. And this is how we think about it. For things that are in the liver and in the rare diseases space, we're going to take them forward ourselves. But for things that are complicated, or the biology is unclear, or they're very competitive, we're open to partnership. The factory space eventually, I believe, will have two or three companies in it trying to persuade payers that they should be reimbursed. And I'm very pleased that I have Pfizer on my side in that negotiation, because they understand the world of payers. And um, eventually that will be the thing that defines gene and genome therapy success and uptake into the community. So what I discover I have now after um, 15 months, 16 months uh, in the job is what I think is a much more balanced platform. The Haemophilia A program partnered with Pfizer is moving ahead and we've treated uh, the first patient. Haemophilia B is a, is, has been more of a challenge, and we've been very open with people that following the SPARC data and with how few patients there are in this, um, recruitment for that has been a challenge. But for MPS 1 and 2, we've had enormous support from the patient groups, and we're very encouraged with the number of patients that are being screened and hope to be able to take that forward very soon. Coming behind that, we have beta thalassemia partnered with BioVerative, and we announced the successful IND last week, which is a real success and a great partnership between the two companies. Th now is the push to get this into the patients, and we would hope to be treating patients at the start of the year. Behind that is Fabry, which we've chosen to do as a gene therapy, which is a, a way to um, spread the, the risk in, within the company. And that should have an IND completed by the middle of next year. I've talked to you about oncology and our desire to partner it. I've talked to you about CNS and the TAU program. And then Huntington's is already in partnership with Shire. So you can see the richness and complexity and, and wonder of the pipeline. And we're very fortunate to have this with a, with a platform behind it that will continue to produce. So what should you all be looking for? And I see many of my analyst friends in, the, in the, the room that have been watching this with great interest. What you should be looking for is clinical data from the four clinical studies in the first half of next year. You should look for progress of the platform that the, the um, thalassemia program progresses into the clinic, that Fabry gets to be an IND. But you should also be looking for really interesting things like the LMP data, where we feel we are more potent than anything we've seen from the competitors, and novel AVs, which we are personally developing. And, and then in, finally in the pipeline, we're doing a really interesting exercise, I believe, called uh, Zinc Finger 2.0, where what we're trying to do is understand each of the parts of the supply chain 
from the moment you inject the AAVs into the patient to the moment the enzyme is produced at the other side. And what we've discovered is, as we get to be real experts in this supply chain, is that there's several parts of the supply chain that you can improve as we understand how transfection, transcription, translation, and production of the enzyme works. And I think it's, it's that level of basic science that's very important to back up the, and create a foundation for gene editing. And then finally, we've been very open that we are looking to do deals. We are hoping to do deals in oncology, and we are we're moving the TAU program and our CNS program forward to a place where the value creation will be maximum for the company. In the last four or five minutes, I want to talk a little bit about the platform, because as I say, at, at the, in the end, we are a zinc finger company, and it's, it's, a, a, it's a scientific study that has been the life's work of many of the, the scientists within Sangamo. And I want to try and introduce some concepts so as we have a common way of think, talking about editing, because there's many people who flash up slides in front of you, and I want you to always ask them about three things. I want you to ask them about precision. Can they edit or uh, bind to nucleotides anywhere in the genome. We believe we have a unique uh, opportunity and ability to do that because of the modularity of zinc fingers. As you can see on the left, they're made up of several pieces. And we can now target any nucleotide in the genome or the one next to it, worst case. And we can do 60% of them within 10 days because we already have the zinc fingers made in, in our library. I want you to ask them about efficiency. How effectively can you make the cut? For the T-cell engineering, we're now up at 90 plus percent. In most of our experiments, it's 90 percent that we can um, tune the zinc fingers to. Because that's then related to specificity, the off target. It's very easy to claim that you show no off target, but what you really ought to be asking is, what is the baseline level? Because the experiment to be well done should have a baseline level, because as each of us go on a plane tonight, we will get some double-stranded breaks in our DNA. And as you do the experiments, there'll be some double-stranded breaks happen. And so what you want to do is to ask them to compare what their, their um, asset does compared to this baseline. And the higher you drive the efficiency, the higher you drive the off-target. The more you create a CRISPR, for example, that is able to target more places within the genome, you lose the specificity of the guide arm and you end up with more off-target. It's an inevitable consequence. And I want to try and talk about it with, with a slightly unusual slide. And what we've done here is we've looked at a, a window of opportunity moving along a piece of DNA with 20 base pair window. And our estimate is for the high fidelity CRISPR-Cas, which seems to be the best one to use because fidelity and no off target is the best thing to do. Within a 20 base pair window, about half of the time it can find some target to, to bind to and cut, and half of the time it doesn't. So if you look at the log scale in the bottom, it's either zero, one, or maybe two times you can find to cut. And if you compare that to zinc fingers, because of the um, ability we have to tune and alter the, the linkers between them, and because we can cut almost any nucleotide within the genome, we end up with, in any 20 base pair window, 450 options, choices that we can make on which is the best zinc finger to use. An example here would be in one of our recent targets for beta thalassemia, we can get this huge array of targets, and it allows us to choose the best one, and it allows us to choose one with very high on target and very low off target. And that's what we all need to drive to, and that's what you should be asking of all the other editing capabilities. And finally, just to talk about off-target, and we've spent a lot of time thinking about this, and we understand now what causes it, which I think is one of the, 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 the beauties of a protein engineering approach and of zinc fingers. What we discovered was a positively charged arginine in the beta-pleated sheet at the back of the zinc finger and in the FOC1, which binds to the negatively charged phosphate uh, binding phosphates in the DNA backbone. And when you remove this and replace it with a neutral uh, amino acid, 
you end up with this. You end up with a, a, a high on target, 80% plus, and no significant off target modification seen compared to control. And we believe this is what we should all be aiming for, and this is how all of the assets should be com compared. Because in the end, this is what we're going to use them for. And this is uh, AJ on the left and Aidan, and his older brother. They're um, six and three. They have MPS2. They were diagnosed when the older brother was three. And they now get infusions every week. And then they go down to go from New Jersey to North Carolina um, to get the latest treatment, the latest clinical trial. But we want to offer their parents more than that. We want to offer them a solution. And we aim to go into patients like this with a way to, to give them a long-lasting solution to their disease. And to do that, we have to do it carefully. Thank you.